What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. As you may know, recently I've been working a lot with Void's particle systems in Blender while customizing the bird and bug systems in our Spiderfy add-on update. While I feel I have a pretty decent grasp of the basics behind Boyd's now, it wasn't always this way and getting started can be tricky if you don't understand the basic concepts behind them. So that being said, in this video I'm going to discuss an overview of what Boyd particle systems are and why we use them in 3D graphics. This specific video is not really a tutorial but more of a case study in understanding this specific type of particle system. Anyways, to understand voids, it's best to first understand particles and particle systems in general. So particles are points in 3D space that have certain properties or parameters that are applied to their behavior throughout the space. A particle system is simply a collection of these points that may interact with each other based on the parameters provided to the system. Now in Blender, we can use a few different models to describe the behavior of these particle systems. These include Newtonian physics, fluid particles, keyed particle physics, and finally, voids. Each of these systems has their own input parameters that you can change to vary how the particles interact in the 3D world and with one another in the scene. So what the heck are Boyd simulations and what kind of interaction do they create from particle to particle? Well, in simple terms, Boyd particle systems are used to simulate the general movement for systems of flocks, swarms, herds, and schools of various kinds of creatures. By using some generally limited artificial intelligence, Boyd particles can be programmed to follow some rules and behaviors based on what the user input for its parameters. A guy by the name of Craig Reynolds developed Boyds in 1986, and ever since then we've been using variations of Boyd systems to simulate these flocking and swarming systems of particles in computer graphics. The rules and behavior inputs for a Boyd particle system describe the behavior of the particles with each other in 3D space. In the most basic form of Boyd simulation, you can adjust settings such as their separation, alignment, and cohesion in the movement from particle to particle. In Blender and other 3D softwares, we have some similar settings in addition to some more complex rules. The main thing you need to set up within the Boyd system is the Boyd brain. The Boyd brain panel is where you can add various rules in order of importance to control how the Boyd particles will react with each other and other particle systems. You can add rules to make particles flock with each other, separate from each other, chase a goal object, avoid certain objects, or even battle other Boyd particle systems in your scene based on the relationship you set up for those particles. After setting up the Boyd brain, you can then adjust the movement parameters to fine tune the movement of your particles even further. But what is the point of setting up the movement of these random particles in your scene? Well, in some cases, the particles and their interaction can look cool by themselves as abstract 3D art that you can post on your Instagram. But like most particle simulation, the really fun part for Boyd particle simulations is when you attach 3D objects or collections of animated creatures like we did with our Spiderfy add-on to create convenient yet organic flocking or swarming results for your scenes through computation. Or maybe you just want to create a swarm of battling bugs or birds trying to kill each other. Either way, Boyd has you covered. And while Boyds are a relatively simple form of limited AI, they work really well after a little experimentation and don't take a ton of processing power to bake their data most of the time. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful to give a general overview of Boyd particle systems. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let me know what kind of videos or tutorials you'd like to see next, and I'll see you next time.